Did you know that I'm a professional football player? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. All right guys, I'm sorry for that trick in the beginning. Hopefully it got you to this point in the video. I hope no one just watched the first 10 seconds and you're gonna tell everyone that I'm a professional football player. I clearly am not. But I do watch football every single week. Every week, every Sunday, I'm tuned in watching football. I, I even play fantasy football, which is pretty much like being a football player, right? I study football, I look at the statistics. I would, I would call myself a devoted fan. Even though where I am, most of the time I don't get to see my team's games, which I am a Seattle Seahawks fan. Go Russell Wilson, go 12. Most of the time I don't get my own games, so that's very sad. But I would say that I am a devoted football fan. I watch football every single Sunday. But does that make me a football player? Does it make me a football player? Because I watch it every Sunday. Absolutely not. If I told you I was a football player because I watch football, you'd say, dude, you're nuts. You've lost your mind. Yet, I can't tell you how many Christians I know think they are Christians because they go and watch a guy preach every single Sunday. You see, watching a football game doesn't make you a football player, and watching a preacher doesn't make you a Christian. You see, to be a football player, you've actually got to strap up, put on the helmet, put on the pads, and get in the game and hit somebody. I would say the same thing's true with Christianity. To be a Christian, you need to strap up, you need to put on the gifts of the Spirit, you need to get in the game, and you gotta do something. Now notice what I'm saying here. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't throw your phone against the wall and, and scream blasphemy and say I'm talking a works religion because I'm not. I believe we are saved only by the grace of God. We are saved by the blood of Jesus, the free unmerited grace that he offers us. I know that in fact I'm teaching through the book of Ephesians right now to my youth and we just went through Ephesians 2 where in verse 8 Paul says this, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves, it is the free gift of God. So I completely understand I'm not saying a works theology, I'm not saying we are saved by our works, we are only saved by the grace of God, the, the blood of Jesus, that is the only way that we are saved. However. Let me tell you a story. So coming up on eight years ago, I married my middle school sweetheart. I remember being in this small church with the pastor and watching the girl of my dreams walk down the aisle to me. She says a tear fell. I don't think it did, but who knows? She's probably right. But almost eight years ago, she walked down the aisle to me. We held hands. We said, I do. We kissed. We joined together in holy matrimony. We committed our lives to each other in front of God and in front of those witnesses. Now, what do you think would have happened if after we got married, after all the people had left, after we had drove to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, before we went to our hotel room, I said, hey, go on back to the room by yourself. I'll be there in a few hours. I've got a date. Well, first of all, I can tell you I wouldn't be right here giving you this video right now. She would have killed me. She's that kind of girl. But we would agree that that is absurd, right? Jeff, I, you just got married. You just committed your life. You just entered into a relationship. You just entered into a commitment to this other person. There are certain things in your life that must change. There are certain things in your life you must do. Staying faithful to your partner is one of those things. That it is an expectation. However, please note, we do not do this. I am not faithful to my wife because it is an expectation. I do not do lovely romantic things for my wife because it is an expectation or it is a requirement. No, I do those things because I love my wife. Because I love her with my whole heart, I will remain faithful. I will do things. I will be there. I'll be by her side. I will be with her through sickness and through health, not because I have to, but because I love her. And I think we can say the same thing is true with our relationship with Jesus. That when we enter into a relationship with Jesus, that things in our life will change. There are going to be things in our life that we will give up. There are things in our life we won't do, and there are things in our life that we will do, not because it is a requirement and not because it is expected, but because we love God and we have the love of God in us. That there are certain things that we will do. 
No, I'm not saying we are saved by these things that we are doing. I am saying we will do these things because we have been saved. We are not saved because we do good works, but instead, since we are saved, we will do good works. I don't think anyone says it better than James in chapter two, verse 14 through 18, he says this, what good is it, my brothers and sister, if someone claims to have faith, but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. James says, faith without deeds is dead. He actually says that we show our faith by our deeds, or we show our faith by our works, by our good works. You see, I'm teaching through the book of Ephesians, as I mentioned before, and, and last night I got to teach on the beginning of Ephesians 4. And actually, I could have preached the entire message on the very first verse of Ephesians 4. I didn't because they're teenagers and they would have got bored. But let me read this to you. Paul says this, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Going into verse 2, he says this, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Notice what Paul says. Notice how Paul starts. He says you are to live worthy of your calling. Notice the wording. You may miss it. Live worthy of your calling. He, he doesn't say that because you are worthy, you have a calling. He says that you have a calling, therefore you should live worthy of that calling. Each and every one of us, each child of God, each Christian, you have a calling on your life. You have a reason you were put in the situations you were put in. The God of all creation, the God who knew you before you were born, had a reason for you. He had a calling for your life. He put you in certain situations, in certain places, around certain people for a certain reason. That you have a calling for your life. Don't ever think that you are a nobody, regardless of what everyone else says, and regardless of what you believe about yourself. The God of all creation created you for a purpose. That He has a reason and a purpose and a calling for your life. You may not feel like you are worthy, but that is okay. You have a calling, so you should live worthy of that calling. Paul goes on in Ephesians 4 to say that we have each been given gifts by the generosity of God. That we have been given gifts by the generosity of Jesus. That each and every one of you have been given gifts, talents, abilities, and skills. And that you have been given those gifts, talents, abilities, and skills for a specific reason. Think about it. Is there something that you are particularly good at? Something you are naturally gifted at, that you are naturally able to pick up, a skill you actually have. Maybe you're a musician, or maybe you're a phenomenal speaker. Maybe you're just brilliant, and you can learn things very quickly. Or maybe you're an artist, or you're the creative type, or maybe you're good at editing. Maybe you're good at gaming. But you have some sort of skill, talent, or ability. That is a gift of God. God has given you that for a purpose. God has given that to you for a reason. And Paul tells us what that reason is. That you have been given this gift of the Spirit for a reason. And Paul says that reason is so that God's people can do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. That skill you have been given, that gift you have been given, that ability, that talent, you were given it for one reason, and that is to do God's work and to build up the church. You have been given that ability, you have been given that skill so that you can build up the body of Christ. You see, each and every one of us, each and every believer, each and every Christian, we have one mission. We have one job. We have one goal. Jesus gave that to us right before He ascended. The last mission He gave us was this. He says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christian, you have a mission. You have a purpose. You have a calling. You cannot accomplish that calling by sitting on the sidelines. You cannot win that game by sitting on the sidelines. You see, Christian, you need to strap up. A football player cannot be a football player sitting on his couch watching the game. You see, in order to be worthy of the calling that you have been called to live, you've got to strap up. You've got to put on the gifts of the Spirit that God has blessed you with. You've got to get in the game. 
There is a calling and a purpose and a plan for your life, but you've got to do the good works because you have been saved by grace, that you want to get out, you want to get in the game, and you want to make disciples of the people around you. God has given you co-workers that do not know Him. God has given you family members that do not know Him. God has put people in your life. God has surrounded you with people that do not know Him. You have a calling, you have a purpose, and you have a mission, and that is to make disciples. Get in the game, Christian. Get in the game. Go out tomorrow with a purpose, knowing you have a calling and you have a plan and you have a big God backing you in it. Get in the game. Strap up. Make disciples. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed today's content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I release content just like this every single week. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you are going to use the gifts God has given you. All right, guys, keep living that bold life.